In 1888, a string of murders plagued the Whitechapel district of London, England. These murders were so gruesome they still live in infamy today. Beyond that, the police were never able to catch the culprit, nicknamed Jack the Ripper. Letters from Whitechapel is a deduction and bluffing game for two to six players, ages 14 and up, from Fantasy Flight. Players will either take on the role of Jack the Ripper, trying to outrun the detectives and reach a secret hideout, or the detectives trying to corner and arrest Jack. Will you be able to deceive the police and make it safely home? Or will you be captured for your heinous crimes? Let's find out in Letters from Whitechapel. Place the large game board in the center of the table within reach of all players. One player will be Jack. It's a good idea to choose the most experienced player, especially when introducing it to new players. Give Jack a new move track sheet and Jack's screen. He will also need a pencil. Place a black Jack pawn on the first knight space on the knight track at the bottom of the board. Jack will secretly select one of the white numbered circles on the game board and report it in the oval on the top of his move track sheet. Give Jack the five red crime scene markers, 19 yellow clue markers, five special movement tokens, and Jack's reference sheet. Distribute the police pawns and matching reference sheets to the remaining players any way that you can agree on, and collect the wretched pawns. Shuffle the head of investigation tiles and place them in a face down pile on their designated spot on the board. Now you are ready to play. Letters from Whitechapel is played over four nights, August 31st, September 8th, September 30th, and November 9th. Each night is divided into two phases, Hell and Hunting. At the beginning of the Hell phase, Jack will collect special movement and woman tokens. The number of each depends on which night it is. On the first night, Jack will collect three coach tokens, two alley tokens, five marked woman tokens, and three unmarked woman tokens. On the second night, he will collect two coach tokens, two alley tokens, four marked woman tokens, and three unmarked woman tokens. On the third night, he will collect two coach tokens, one alley token, three marked woman tokens, and three unmarked woman tokens. Finally, on the fourth night, he will collect one coach token, one alley token, one marked woman token, and three unmarked woman tokens. Then, Jack will place the woman tokens on any of the red number circles with the red faces down. On night two and on subsequent nights, he will not be able to place a woman on spaces with the red crime scene tokens. The red marked woman tokens are Jack's possible targets. The unmarked woman tokens are fake targets designed to fool the police. Only Jack will know which is which. Now the detectives will turn over the top tile of the head of investigation stack. The player who controls that color is the head of investigation. They will place the seven patrol tokens, five marked with the colors of detectives, and two false detectives on any of the yellow bordered squares. Only the head of investigation will know where the real detectives are. In subsequent rounds, the head of investigation will have a few restrictions on placement. Five of the tokens will have to be placed on spaces occupied by policemen at the end of the previous night. These tokens do not have to match in color. The last two must be on yellow bordered squares not occupied by policemen at the end of the previous night. Once the policemen have been placed, Jack will turn over each of the woman tokens revealing the possible victims. The tokens that are unmarked are removed from the board. The marked tokens are replaced with the wretched figures. and the red time of the crime token is placed on the yellow Roman numeral one. Jack can now choose to kill one of the wretched now or wait a little longer. If Jack chooses to wait, the head of investigation will move the time of the crime token to the next Roman numeral and move each of the wretched to an adjacent numbered circle following the dotted lines. The head of investigation must follow three rules when moving the wretched. They cannot end their movement adjacent to a policeman, they cannot travel through a policeman or end their movement on a crime scene token. If there are no legal moves, the wretched stays put. Jack can then reveal one of the police tokens by flipping them face up. If it is a fake police token, it is removed from the game board. If it has a color, 
It stays on the game board face up. Now Jack has the option to wait again or to kill. If Jack chooses to kill or the time of the crime has hit the five spot, he'll record the number of the location on his sheet in the space marked with the corresponding Roman numeral that the time of the crime token is on and the row of the corresponding knife. Then he will remove the wretched token and place a crime scene token on the space. Place the second Jack token on the space with the time of the crime token. The detectives will then reveal the rest of the policeman tokens, removing the fake tokens and replacing the color tokens with corresponding color pawn. Remove the rest of the wretched tokens from the board. Now, the hunt begins. Jack will move to an adjacent numbered circle by following the dotted lines. He cannot move through crossings that have police on it. Because Jack moves in secret, he will write down the number circle in the next available space on his sheet. Once it has been noted, Jack will move his pawn one space to the right on the movement track. He can also use one of his special movements if he wishes, either a coach or an alley. If he uses a coach, he can move two adjacent circles and the coach allows him to move through the crossings with policemen. Both of the spaces used by Jack must be recorded in separate spaces. Jack will then place a coach token covering the two movement spaces used on the track. If Jack uses an alley, he can move through a block of buildings to any circle on the perimeter of that block. A block of houses is an area on the game board that is completely bounded but not interrupted by dotted lines. Once he marks his new space on his sheet, Jack will place an alley token on the movement space used on the track. If Jack has reached his hideout, he must announce it to the rest of the players and phase one will start again. If Jack cannot reach his hideout and announce it by the last possible move on the tracker, he immediately loses the game. The policemen will move their tokens following the dotted lines up to two crossings. Once they have moved, starting with the head of investigation and moving clockwise, detectives will decide if the color policeman token they control is looking for clues or executing an arrest. If they are looking for clues, the detective will announce a numbered circle adjacent to their crossing to search. Jack will look at his sheet to determine if that number has been written down. If it has, Jack will place a yellow clue token on the space and that detective's turn ends. If he wasn't there, the detective can keep announcing other adjacent numbered circles to search until they find a clue or run out of adjacent circles. If they decide to execute an arrest, the detective must choose one adjacent numbered circle. If Jack is at that location, he has been apprehended. If he isn't, that detective's turn is over. Night 3 will start the same way, but Jack will have two victims this night. He will choose two wretched pawns to remove and replace with crime scene tokens. Jack will notate the two numbers in any order on the space where the time of the crime token is and the adjacent space to the right. The space to the right is his current location. This is his first move, so his tracker will be placed on the space next to the time of the crime token, and the police will move first. The police know the location of both crimes, but not in which order. The game ends in one of three ways. Jack runs out of moves, or commits five murders and makes it back to his hideout on the fourth night, or when the police make a successful arrest. And that's Letters from Whitechapel.